This is my brain. Somewhere under there, anyway. This hedgehog cum shower cap is covered in electrodes, carefully pushed through with some conducting gel onto my scalp. All this so I can fly this plane. A real life, up in the air, not a simulator, plane. Today, my brain and the plane are going to be interfaced. I'm going to fly by thought alone, without a pilot's license, or frankly, any experience. All it takes is really just a tiny amount of practice in a simulator. I'm going to be only the second person to ever do this after the inventor, Santosh, there. He's hoping that what he learns can be used to improve human cognitive capacity. So this airplane here is a King Air C90. It's a turbine-powered uh, airplane that we use as a test bed for a lot of our avionics testing. But today we're going to be doing uh, a test with a brain-computer interface uh, plugged into the air airplane. It sounds crazy to control a plane by thought alone. And to be honest, my main thought right now is just mild terror. I feel really sorry for the other people on board. This is getting a little scary now. This is about to get real. <laughs> In front of me is a grid with a series of commands. So all I'm doing is just focusing on this screen. At the moment, the green box is around the descent. Here, I've got a climb, left, descent, right, and this is level flight in the middle. I just have to focus really hard to concentrate on one of those commands. And the plane will do my bidding. To turn right, I focus on the right arrow. Every time it flashes, my brain also flashes with a kind of recognition pattern. That's recognized by the sensors and the computer that they're connected to. When it's seen that aha pattern matching the timing of one of the commands, the computer figures that that is what I want to happen. To help me focus on the right thing, Santosh suggests counting every time I see it flash. All right, Jack, you're flying this thing. <laughs> okay, no hands. Uh, where would you like me to point? How about a right turn? Right turn, okay. Right turn, uh, and we are right. That is crazy. We spend the next 30 minutes going through some maneuvers until I'm completely convinced that the system works. By that time, the pressure, both mental and just the physical pressure of the cap on my head are giving me a bit of a headache. But unprompted, the pilot offers up a more extreme test, a collision path with a hill. So Mike, the pilot, is deliberately flying us into the side of that hill. There's warnings going off everywhere. And then I'm gonna turn that around by Focusing up, Mike, this is really making me nervous now. What are all these beeps? Pull up. Pull up. Eventually, I can see defeat on this one. But to be fair, this was a far bigger challenge than the system or I were really designed for. In more regular, calm flying, I managed to trigger the correct command about 90% of the time. This isn't going to replace the yoke and the pedals anytime soon. It's a proof of concept, but it's a thrilling one. I still have adrenaline pumping when we come into land. But I mean, really, who'd want to have this thing stuck on your head just to issue commands? What we're doing in our lab is to develop technologies to be able to measure pilot workload, attention, a whole bunch of parameters that affect um, pilot performance in the flight deck. The eventual goal is to get all of this technology working in real time in an airplane. But in order to do that, we have to be testing things in the actual environment where it will work. So while we don't envision uh, an aircraft being controlled by neural signals for a long time, we hope that the work we're doing will help create more robust technologies. So you may not get to ride on a thought controlled plane anytime soon, but technology is coming to make sure your pilot is operating at peak performance. And that will make flying safer for us all. And don't worry, I won't be the one in the cockpit.